Hey gang, welcome to the show. It is Monday. <laughs> I spent two and a half hours recording with CTO Larson, so stay tuned to his channel to make sure you catch up with how we analyze the top 25 cryptos. Anyway, let's jump in. Today, it's really all about a lot of questions that I've gotten over a long period of time. Let me make sure this is actually working. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is working. Always got to test that. A lot of questions over a long period of time about how we calculate inflation and why we focus on it so much. Are we too obsessed with it? Well, we decided to turn this into a little story to really emphasize the importance of tokenomics and why it's important to look at things like money printing in the real world. Um, it was the money printing in the real world that I saw happening and it changed my life. It made me go in hard into certain assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum and it proved to work out very well. Now, the other interesting thing is printing, money printing in the real world is a bad thing, but also it's debasement. Same thing with token inflation, it's debasement. And disclosure as well, just so people don't get upset, I own Avalanche. I bought a 10, sold at 50, and I, I recently bought back in on the 23rd of, uh, 23rd of February um, at a kind of a perfect dip time. So that is the disclosure out of the way. And let's jump in and see where we are. So this is going to be about inflation and avalanche and where we see things coming and how it all got triggered. So uh, first of all, math, money, freedom. And second disclaimer. Now, on the 12th of July, we did our should I buy video on avalanche. And the conclusion was a resounding... Yes, but there was one thing that had us concerned. If anybody wants to go back and check, that's the beauty of the internet. It doesn't lie. It covers everything that you say. And I stream live and sometimes I may make a mistake, but if that is the case, who cares? At least you know I'm being real. So in reality, the summary is I, I did love this technology. I loved all the use cases. Uh, being able to buy $10 to $12 from a high of 60 was a no-brainer back in summer of 2021. And <laughs> it's fast, it's decentralized, it's cheap. And I gave it a big thumbs up. However, there was one red flag I did have on this particular asset. And that is the tokenomics emission rate is a small red flag. So it was always nagging at me. It's like, this inflation is kind of bothering me. But then this happened. So uh, I did a video, Alex Mashinsky watched it. He took the numbers from my video. He created an exhibit and he did a tweet on it. And <laughs> that was very funny. This is earlier this year. And the inflation that I list, you guys know I monitor all inflation of all tokens. And that's where we are. But what we didn't expect happening, hang on a second. Whoops. I didn't have the... Uh, I think I screwed up here a little bit. I had the wrong camera on. Let me just talk about where we are. Uh, make sure I don't miss anything. That's why I should watch myself live. Hold on a second. Yeah, I wasn't showing the slides. I'm gonna have to just start again. <laughs> Sorry about this, everybody. Live TV. And I'm juggling too many balls. And uh, let me see. Switch gears, switch camera. All right. That's off now. So what happened was uh, <clears throat> we did our token analysis on 12th of July, 2021. There's one little red flag for me, and you can see it there at the bottom. And that was, I gave the project a big thumbs up, but there was that nagging item. I was concerned about that little red flag you can see here in the red box. Token emissions rate is a small red flag for me. But then that triggered off something else. So uh, early this year, I did a video, Alex Mashinsky watched it. He took some of my token inflation rates that were out there and and he posted a tweet. And Emin Gunsur, the Cornell professor and head of Avalanche, said the numbers were very wrong. So let me explain the story. Alex took my numbers, made a post, compared the deflationary nature of Celsius token, as well as Ethereum, Luna, all the numbers you'll see more and more today. And then the Avalanche number was 32.77%, which was the exact number we calculated at the time. Emin said, this number is incredibly wrong. And I was like, hmm, what happened? So... Anyway, let's dig into the whole story of inflation and where it goes. So first of all, tokenomics. If you look at the marketing from Avalanche and you look at a lot of the material, you'll come across this slide time and time again. And it says, you know, 
is it deflationary? Sort of. Looks like it's going that way. The supply is reduced from avalanche being burned from transactions fees, creation of assets, creation of blockchains, creation of subnets. And that all sounds well and good. We like things that are deflationary. But when is a tipping point? And that is the question. Let's dig in. So if we look at the burn of Avalanche through today, March 2022, we can see that 1.1 million tokens have been burned. But how much is that in reality? We can compare this over the weekend, and this triggered a lot of this thought, how that compares to the Ethereum burn. <coughs> so you can see here, yes, there is a burn, but it's quite insignificant. It's about a quarter of 1% of the 400 million supply. But remember that number 400 million because that's not really the number that we're supposed to be looking at. And the ETH burn to date is about 2 million burned. It's about 1.67% of the supply. So how does this benchmark against the actual inflation or the emission rate of the token? Remember, there's many, many different names and sometimes people use different names to confuse people out there. So let's, before we jump in there, we'll look at the VC Insider ranking, because this is a very important part of the inflation we look at too. It's important to see how Avalanche, the Insider VC holdings are about 42%. This is the average for all the top names that are kind of in the peer group is about 46%. So you can see Flow 58%, Luna 56%, Phantom 53%, BNB 50%, Solana 48%, Salo 44 Avalanche 42 and then goes down the list. So you can get a feel for that, how that actually compares, because a lot of the emission and release and the lockup can sometimes be tied to this number too. So let's talk about what we used during our July 12th video as research. We used an Avalanche webpage and it goes into detail as to the tokenomics, investing schedule and emission schedule. And we're very glad we keep all our references and screenshots because this page has been taken down. It doesn't exist, but it's okay. We still have artifacts. Now, when we did our initial analysis on Avalanche, we used this site to analyze the vesting schedule. This is critical. This is why we mentioned the VCs at the beginning. And you can see that this chart where it launched in September 2000, and then you can see uh, our first video was July 2021, and the arrow points to where we were in that vesting schedule. And then you point to the second arrow, which is where we are today. And this is the emission schedule all the way out to September 2024. And you can see we have about 144 million tokens to go between now and then. That's approximately 29 months. Remember, this site is no longer available. It's hidden, but... We did it 10 months ago, and this is how things change. The inflation was very steep, and today uh, it still is. So let's calculate some of the numbers that are behind this now to get a good feel for where we are. Now, the fundraising history, this is what the VCs buy at. You can see here in Feb 2019, there was a seed sale. They were buying at 33 cents. And then in May 2020, there was a private sale. VCs, 50 cents a token, and then the public sale, again, 50 cents, 50 cents, 50 cents, and 85 cents. And that's where a lot of the money actually came in. Wouldn't it be nice to buy Avalanche at 30 cents and sell it now at 90? Well, that's the nature of the beast. And this is not, this is not exclusive to Avalanche. This happens with all the other names. That's why I mentioned the VCs that own the other names too. So the risks uh, on July 12th, we also listed in the video. The dynamic emission rate makes tokenomics difficult to assess. And it is. Calculating inflation is difficult to assess. Let's look at some price statistics from July 12th, 2021. You can see here a couple of things to note. The market cap was $2 billion, 24% circulating supply. There was a, basically a 4x to come. Market dominance was 0.15%. It was the 46th ranked token. And now it's number 10 or 11. And... In doing so, though, we were able to store key items like this, where we could see a lot of the data that's critical today, like max supply and a few other items we'll note in, we'll note in a second right now. So now let's compare the avalanche supply comparison from a year ago, 365 days ago, to today, and find out where we are. So here, a couple of things to note. The circulating supply on 319, March 19th, 2021, was 127.7 million avalanche. The max supply was 720 million, and the total supply was 381 million. Now, one year later, the circulating supply is 267 million. Total supply, 395, called it 396, 
and the max supply has disappeared, ladies and gentlemen. Disappeared. This is from Coin Market Cap. To prove it's from Coin Market Cap, we'll get there in a second. But this is the avalanche inflation calculation just over that year. 108.97% over the last 12 months. Total supply up by 3.67%. We don't care much about that. But the concerning piece that makes me a little bit nervous is the max supply has disappeared from coin market cap and the website that had all the original information with vesting schedules has disappeared as well. I don't know if people are covering their tracks. I mean, come on the channel. We'd love to discuss this with you as well. Now, coin market cap today. You can go there yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, and look it up. You'll see max supply is now gone. And it was there up until a few months ago or a couple of weeks ago even. And this is a little bit concerning. The website here is coinmarketcap.com forward slash currencies forward slash avalanche. And you will get there yourself. Now let's talk about money flow. I always say, follow the money, understand money flow, and it's critical. So over the last year, we have 140 million tokens hit the market, average price $60. The result is it requires required $8.4 billion of buying pressure to flood into that asset to keep it afloat. And the key part here is another 144 million tokens will be released over the next 29 months. That is up until September 2024. And that is 5 million tokens per month on average, assuming a linear growth rate. And that requires 450 million a month to flow into this asset to keep it afloat. That's half a billion dollars. That's a lot of cash. Really, no, I don't, don't care where you come from. That's a lot of money. So this is one of my concerns. Maybe something's wrong here in the numbers, but I doubt it. We've triple checked them. Now the avalanche inflation projection, this is the key part, over the next 29 months, 144 million tokens over the next 29 months will hit the market to increase the circulating supply from 267. And the average inflation rate we calculate based on this going forward, assuming a linear inflation rate will be 23.5%. And that's after 109% over the last 12 months. So if you include the last 12 months and the next 29 months, the average inflation rate is 48%. And that's where it gets kind of tricky. And that's where my tweet or my information, my video that was taken by Alex Mashinsky is correct at that point in time in January 2022. Now, conclusion, everybody. Um, let's look at the top peer rankings. Just to put inflation in perspective against some of the peer group here, you can see Avalanche is top of the list at 23.5%. At least it could be a lot higher. It could be 48%, depending on at what point in time you start calculating the inflation. Do you calculate it from today? Do you calculate it from six months ago? Or do you calculate it from 12 months ago? That is key, everybody. And Hedera Hashgraph, uh, one I don't like, is 23.34%. Algorand, 22.39%. Uh, Salo, 19.6%. Phantom, 13.5%. Polygon, 13.15%. Uh, Harmony, 1, 11%. Polkadot, 9.99%. They just went under 10% a week ago. Um, Solana, 9.18%. Stellar, 7.88%. And remember, Stellar has been out for a long time, and it's still inflating like crazy. The important thing to note here as well, the longer a token is out there, with the exception of XRP, uh, typically the lower the inflation goes. When you look at names like Cardano, you can see here, very low inflation of 1.99%. Uh, Ethereum, 0.54%. Luna, 1.72%, etc., etc. et cetera. But you can get the feel here now. It's important not to have a highly inflationary token because it can impact uh, your price going forward. Chainlink, classic example of how we hurt. So conclusion, everybody. Sorry about this being a lot of numbers. I'm going fast. The last 12 months had over 100% inflation. We proved that. This required $8.4 billion of buying pressure to keep it afloat. And it did. And it did very well. It went from rank 46 to rank number 10. And the total max supply mysteriously missing from coin market cap. That makes me nervous. The burn is insignificant compared to token inflation. That 1.1 million coins over 720 million coins doesn't matter right now. It's completely insignificant. It's a nothing burger. In the next 29 months, we'll release 5 million tokens per month, requiring about 450 million per month in cash flow at the current price of 90 bucks. Now, remember, I still hold 
this asset. I got out, I got in at 10, got out at like 50, and got back in on the 60s on February 23rd. Full disclosure, I still hold a piece, but I'm still very nervous about the inflation. So I'm not telling my buy or sell, just pointing out how, why it's very, very important to analyze inflation, calculate it, and use it for your investment thesis. I like inflation, deflationary assets or very, very low inflationary assets, or they can be inflationary if they have hyper growth. And Avalanche surely does have that right now. But there come a time, if that growth ever slows down, the price pressure, the price suppression from token inflation will be too much. So that's it, everybody. I hope that helped. And you can see that this is most certainly a very inflationary token as benchmarked against this peer group. So for somebody like you mean to say I am terribly wrong, I challenge you, sir. Come on the channel. Let's talk. I own an avalanche. I think our audience here needs to learn more. So big thank you, everybody, for being here. Sorry for that little blob at the beginning. Take care, everybody. Bye.